and we're live. Hey everybody, welcome into the App Flippin' Hippos YouTube channel. I am Star the Flippin' Hippo. For those of you that may be new to the channel, I am the face of the Hippo Hut or the Flippin' Hippos, as it hey, were. I just created a I'm an amateur. You can hear that I didn't mute the chat. <laughs> um, and my life and business partner is Keith. We do reselling on eBay and Poshmark primarily. Also Macari, Amazon, Bonanza, local sales, and some other things. And uh, this is our YouTube channel. A lot of the information you get comes from Keith. He just doesn't get in front of the camera. He does not like to be on camera. Um, so I am the face on the social media that you'll always see and on YouTube. But a lot of the information comes from Keith as well. Um, he comes up with a lot of the ideas for the content and things like that. I just relay it. But a lot of it's mine too. This is my full-time job. Keith still works outside of the house. We are working towards him firing his boss and working at home with me full-time. And that is our goal for 2019. For those of you that are not new to the channel, welcome back, welcome in, thank you for joining us tonight. I see Nicole says, happy Sunday. Today is Cinco de Mayo, so happy Cinco de Mayo, everybody. Yesterday was Star Wars Day, may the 4th be with you. And I guess tomorrow is Revenge of the 6th for the Sith fans, so uh, it's a big weekend. Um, <laughs> Jamie is watching me in the Walmart parking lot with two toddlers. That's great. Hi, Virginia. Um, <clears throat> researching does suck in the beginning. I will absolutely agree with you there. But once you learn a specific niche or a specific type of whatever, then it's easy. When, when I was learning jeans, I almost threw in the towel. Like, I hate fashion. I hate clothing. And now... I can look at a pair of jeans and tell you if it's boot cut or flare, if it's low rise or mid rise. I can look at the brand and tell you how much I'd list it for. So it sucks in the beginning and it's kind of what we're going to talk about tonight is putting in the work and how it gets easier with time. Um, everything sucks when you're first learning it and you're new to something, I think. And then you just get better with repetition and um, your knowledge increases and you just start to learn to remember things, I guess. Repetition. Repetition. I see Gnome and the Frog is here. That's Bill and David. Hey guys, thank you for joining us tonight. Hi, Joan. So, um, let's jump right into tonight's topic. Are you wasting time? You probably are. We are all guilty of wasting time. Most of you saw the video I put up a week ago Friday, so not this past Friday, the third, the week before that. If you haven't seen it, once this video, um, the replay goes up on the channel, I will go ahead and have it pop up here on the screen for you. And you can go back and you can still do the challenge. Um, we're checking in tonight, but if you didn't do the challenge or you didn't see the video, video you can watch it later. You can still jump in. Um, as my grandma always used to say, and I am going to do a very rare thing here, you guys. I'm going to drop a swear word on my family-friendly channel, but I want to quote my grandmother correctly. It's never too late to get your shit together. It's never too late. So you can always go back and watch that challenge video and partake in the challenge. Um, Virginia just finished packing up nine orders. Well, you know what? You got to get rid of the cheap stuff too. So um, you got to look at it that way. We have an entire clearance category in our store that we've put all of our crap into that we just don't want to deal with anymore. And we sell them for 99 cents with like $8 shipping on them or $7.50 shipping. And yeah, it's all crap, but it's got to go and it's activity. So your store is getting attention. It's getting eyeballs. It's getting activity. If you're making a couple of bucks, you're making your cost of goods back plus a little bit of profit. And you could turn that around into better stuff as you learn and you know how to source better. Let's try to look at it positively, right? Um... So back to what I was saying about the challenge. What I asked you guys to do for that challenge was to, well, number one, y'all need a bullet journal. If you don't have a bullet journal yet, as long as I've been saying for you to get one, um, you need one. You don't need to go to Barnes & Noble and spend $20 on a hardcover fancy moleskin diary. You can seriously go buy a 25 cent spiral bound notebook from Walmart, but you need a bullet journal. You need some kind of notebook to keep track of your appointments, your life, your tasks, your to-do lists, 
anything to do with your business, your appointments, all that good stuff. You need something. So I asked you guys to get that something out, even if it was scrap paper, I didn't care, for the purpose of the challenge. And for seven days, they did not have to be consecutive days, but I wanted you guys to have a good solid seven days to look at, different days of the week, because we all do different things on different days. I wanted you to write a to-do list for each of those days, what you wanted to accomplish, and then keep track of everything you did from the time you woke up till you went to bed and how much time you spent on each of those activities. And I asked you to be honest. I asked you to absolutely put on there if you spent five hours on a video game, two hours on Facebook, and you didn't work. Because the purpose was for you to get a broad view of where you're actually... I realize my shirt probably looks bad because you guys are seeing the top. This is uh, Suicide Squad. For those of you that didn't see the movie, it's not just a shirt that's suicide. It's Suicide Squad. It's from a movie. Okay, anyway. I wanted you guys to go back and look and realize all the days that you didn't finish your to-do list, why you didn't finish it, and where you're wasting your time. And seven days is a really, really good view of that, as long as you were honest. Um, hi, Holly. Welcome in. Thank you for joining us. So those of you that did participate, I hope you brought your um, papers with you so we can talk about where everyone is wasting time. Um, I have some guesses on where people are wasting most of their time. If you want to admit to everyone here in the live show and later viewing the replay that's going to read the chat, if you're willing to admit, I want you guys to put in the chat where you waste most of your time and throw them out there be honest you know you, you got to hold yourself accountable and part of that is admitting to the world what you do wrong um some of my guesses are facebook video games and that's not just video games on xbox and playstation how many y'all have those dumb games on your phone like candy crush and those trivia games that you just sit and waste time on instagram facebook social media in general games video games in general TV. How many of you waste time on TV? And how many of you waste time? This is my biggest folly. Look, I'll, I'm going to throw mine out there for you guys. I'm going to throw it out there. My biggest time waste is when I'm facing something I don't particularly like doing or want to do. And I will just sit there and do nothing. Um, it's terrible. It's like I'm not... Like... Uh, like a good example is when I list shoes, I hate listing shoes. I do, but they're good money. Um, I'll sit and stare into space and I'll think about, oh, what can I be planning for dinner next week and what can I put on the menu? And I just like do nothing productive. I'm just like avoiding doing the thing that I'm supposed to be doing because I don't want to. Whereas I could have just jumped in, listed my 10 pairs of shoes for the day, been done with it, moved on to something else, or just admitted to myself, hey, I don't want to do shoes today, I'm not feeling it, and move the pictures into a separate folder on the computer or whatever, and move on to something I like doing. Um, but that's mine. Like, I am really bad at just wasting time when I'm avoiding doing something I don't enjoy doing. If I'm busy all day doing things I like doing, or at least can tolerate, um, I keep busy all day long. I'm, I'm constantly in motion. I'm really, really good with time management. I'm really good with um, having brain farts. What's the word I'm looking for? When, multitasking. There you go. I'm really good at multitasking. I'm the person who's doing the dishes while I'm cooking dinner, so after dinner, everything's pretty much done. I'm the person who, if I have to call a friend and talk to them, they're on speaker while I measure jeans. I'm constantly doing something. I'm multitasking, whether it's business related or tasks around the house. Um, and if everything I have on my to-do list that day is something I like doing or I just do as part of my routine, I just do it. But when I really don't like something, I will just sit there and stare at the wall just like that and it's it's ridiculous it's ridiculous because I need to learn how to just tackle it and get it over with already um because I know I've said this to you guys before sometimes when you avoid things they get bigger with time they seem bigger they seem harder the longer you avoid them the harder it is to face them um that's the big problem with death piles and the I don't want to piles too the longer you put something off the harder it is so I need to get to a point where I can just tackle things 
and get them out of the way and move on to something else or just put them aside and make make myself deal with it another day and spend that day doing productive things. I'm going to take a break and look at the chat real quick. Virginia learned that her kid interrupts her every 10 minutes. Yeah, that's the reality of having kids, especially younger kids in the house. Um, Georgie's girl, smile about your shirt. I saw a shirt at Salvation Army. Made me think of you. Oh, well, that's really sweet. Um, yeah, I did. I actually got this for 99 cents at Goodwill. I did show in a haul video. Um, I get a lot of my graphic tees there because they're 99 cents. And if you go to comic book stores, these shirts are like 20 and 30 bucks. Anyway, Holly says she wastes time eating, sleeping, and cleaning the house. What a waste of time. Yeah, those are like, well, eating I like, obviously. You guys can tell. I enjoy eating. I love food. Um, sleeping is a pain, is to me a waste. Um, I always say to Keith, I wish they would invent something where we didn't need sleep. Um, and cleaning, yeah, who like, but who likes to clean and who wants to clean? It's like, and I get really resentful about cleaning too. That's another thing I'm bad about is cleaning because it's like, it takes me 10 minutes to clean the bathroom, let's say. But in my mind, that 10 minutes, I could have listed two pairs of jeans. I could have answered all my YouTube comments. <laughs> um, so that's something I just, I, um, I follow Fly Lady. For those of you that don't follow Fly Lady, you need to look her up. She will change your life. She has a whole system you can implement into your life to declutter and to attack chores daily. So you do like 15 minutes, 10 to 15 minutes of cleaning a day. You pick one thing a day that you do. You force yourself to do it. By the end of the week, your house is clean. So I follow her system and I'm pretty good at following it. You know, oh, I don't want to sweep him up the the ebay room my back is really really hurting well it takes me two minutes and it's done and that's the only chore i have to do and so she has you like put your chores out throughout the week so each day you're cleaning but only for like 10 minutes um i know a lot of people save all their house cleaning up for like that one day on the weekend and everybody pitches in and you spend the whole entire day cleaning she's really against that because nobody wants to do that she's all about breaking it into really small chunks and cleaning a little bit every day and it's really really helpful um, she has a thing she calls the control journal, which is a lot like a bullet journal that she has you implement into your life. She's more for organizing and cleaning like your personal life and your actual household, but I absolutely recommend her to everybody, especially if you work from home and you run your own business. She can help you get, you know, she can help you tackle how to declutter and clean and do the self care. She's all about self care, drinking water, exercising, and if you implement that into what I tell you about bullet journaling and scheduling your work time, everything runs really smooth. And in fact, my bullet journal is like a hybrid between a typical bullet journal and a control journal of the fly lady. I discovered her like 15 years ago. My life has never been the same. I absolutely love her. So if you don't follow her, you should be. Um, yeah, Virginia, absolutely. When you have little kids, it's constant and but that's not going to be there forever. And we're going to talk about how family is not a waste of time in just a second. You guys know I do always make my lists of everything I want to talk about. But um, enjoy that time because they're not little forever. Um, mine are almost 18 and 15 next weekend. Holly's son just turned 18. By the way, Holly, tell your son happy birthday from Star. Happy 18th birthday. That's so exciting. But yeah, they don't stay young forever. So um, enjoy them when they're little when you can. Uh, bed, better Barbie says I just diagnosed her problem. Yeah, we are all really, really good at avoiding things we don't want to do. And that's why to-do lists are really great. Because you have to go down through it and check things off as you go. And this challenge that I did, I always knew I avoided things I didn't like to do. Um, but I'm more aware of it now. Because I did the challenge with you guys too. I did the challenge with you. I will put that out there. I will never ever challenge you guys to do anything that I haven't already done myself or wouldn't do myself or won't do right along with you guys. Last year when I challenged you to get out of your comfort zones, I went out and sourced shoes and listed shoes in our store and on our closet. Um, so I did it right alongside of you guys. And... I noticed it. It was terrible. Whenever I'm listing, here's the thing. Whenever I'm listing anything that isn't plush or jeans, I'm not happy and I'm avoiding it, staring at the wall. 
And every night after dinner, I waste about 15 minutes before I'll get up and clean. And it's so stupid because I just told you, and this is something I learned from Fly Lady, the clean as you go. I just told you I fill up the sink with soapy water. I wash dishes and clean the kitchen as I'm cooking dinner. Most of our dinners are in crock pots. For those of you that are familiar with my cooking series on this channel, most of our dinners are one pot meals or crock pot meals, very easy. And still, when we're done eating and Keith gets up and he comes in here to do his photos and his listing for the night, I just sit in that chair and I'm, I get on Facebook or I'm just like staring. Cause I don't, it could be two plates and I don't want to deal with it. And I noticed I'm wasting 15, 20 minutes a night after dinner. And so I'm, I'm really working on that because I typically get all of my photos, my list, um, my photos, sorry, my messages, my YouTube comments, my video, um, post sharing. I usually get most of that out of the way in my nine to five that I work. And then my evenings are supposed to be for projects and extra things like the jeans guide and the plush guide I've been working on for two months, right? Um, and so I try to get everything done during the day except for the last time I share posh every day, I do it at 10 p.m. at the last party. And I'm wasting 20 minutes a night. I could have built a website by now. Those seven days that I wasted 20 minutes a day, um, you know, it's been almost, it's been a week and a half technically since I put the challenge out. And how many nights before that? How many 20 minutes have I been wasting? So that was the point of it. And I did do it with you guys and I found where I'm weak as well. So um, research is definitely a waste of time. It can be. You know, you got, you got to look up comps. You got to do your research. But that's the next thing I want to talk about. But I want to catch up on the comments real quick. Um, Maria, I feel the same way. It's like no matter how many times you do dishes or laundry, there's more. There's more. It's never caught up. It's one of those things that there's always more. Um, Treasures by Grace loves Fly Lady. Yeah, she's she changed my life 15 years ago when I felt overwhelmed and chaos like she talks about. Um, but yeah. Yeah, Holly, absolutely. And tell them I absolutely like the flamingo tea you got your son for his birthday. That was so cute. Um, Georgie's girl's been wanting a photographer to come over while she's at work to photograph clothes. Finally found one. He wanted to start last Monday, but I wasn't ready. Um, finally got the photo. See, that's good. You finally got it ready, but had you been following Fly Lady, you would have been ready. Her system is called Chaos. Can't have anyone over syndrome. It's an acronym. Can't have anyone over syndrome. And it's all about if you spend 10 minutes a day cleaning and people drop in or something happens, your house is always company ready. Um, so it's just something to think about, especially for us, you guys, we have crap. We have, even if they're legitimate stuff you're working on. Okay. You see what these hippos are sitting on? Can you guys see that? They're sitting on piles of jeans. These are things I'm actually going to measure, photograph and list. I have another pile over here that's all been photographed. Um, and I have bags over there of stuff we just sourced today that I've already steamed and they're ready for photos. But this is legitimate stuff I'm working on. It's not like the I don't want, those are the death piles. But we legitimately have piles of stuff we're working on. And until the whole process is done, the measuring, photographing, listing, and then it's put away in our inventory. And you better have an inventory system if you don't. I have a video on an inventory system. You will thank me because if you don't have one, you're going to start losing items. And you're going to be wasting time. We're talking about wasting time tonight. If you're spending... More time than you need to find an item for shipping, it's time to get a good inventory system in place. You need one. It will save you time and stress and anxiety and canceling orders and all of that. But my point is, is until our process is done and everything's neatly put away, we have piles. There's no way, there's absolutely no way around it as a reseller to never have, not have a pile. You're always going to have a pile of something you're working on. We have an entire third floor of storage that is dedicated to this business. And then we have this big room on the second floor that is our eBay room. And we still have piles down here because, well, first of all, I have a bad back. But even if I didn't have a bad back and I wasn't disabled, I'm not traipsing up and downstairs all day. I'm keeping what I'm working on down here, moving it up when it's done. So we're always going to have these piles of stuff so you want to keep the rest of the clutter down, the rest of the 
um, clutter and mess and you want to keep that all organized. You want to have your inventory system in place and your actual real life stuff not cluttering so that it kind of keeps it to a minimum. And most of us, if we had guests over and walked in our eBay room and saw the mess, they'd understand. But hey, Catherine, welcome in. You're welcome. Um, and at any time, even if you just got here. So thanks for joining us. Okay, so most of you, from what I gather, that did the challenge, figured out where you were wasting time and you know where you're wasting time. Um, and I, like I said, I'm going to put it out there. I think most of it's Facebook, games, TV, being on your phone, stuff like that. Where you're probably wasting time that you didn't know you're wasting time is being a perfectionist. Y'all gotta let that go. Y'all got to let being a perfectionist just go. Let it go. Do not spend 50 minutes comping one stupid shirt. And I called it a stupid shirt because if it's taking you 50 minutes, 30 minutes, 20 minutes to comp one shirt, that shirt is stupid. It has wasted your time. Time is money. And that shirt is now wasted, wasted part of your life. Um, yes, you want to take good measurements. Yes, you want to take good photos. Yes, you want to comp your items, but you don't need to be a perfectionist. I see time and time again where people are like literally Googling and, um, there, there are times and there are exceptions. Don't get me wrong. I'm like talking right into the mic tonight. Um, where you need to be comping and you need to be looking up Google. I've looked up RN numbers. That's fine. But the majority, especially if you're a used clothing reseller or a plush seller, guys, the majority of what you need to do is to simply type what you've got in on eBay and filter it by solds or, and new and used. That's it. Two seconds. If the prices are all over the place, pick a middle ground. Um, that's all I'm going to say about that. I did get a lot of requests in um, our Facebook group. Which, by the way, if you're not a member of the Flippin' Hippo, Flippin Hippos Reseller Pod on Facebook, link is in the description box. Join us over there. Um, we have a lot of good discussions in there, a lot of great people. But I had a lot of requests in there to do a whole video about comping, how to pick your prices for your items, and of course, how to save time on your comping. So that's coming out this, this coming week. I promise you guys I will do a whole video on how to get your prices and comp and save time there. But tonight I just wanted to touch on that, that a lot of you need to maybe take a step back and just think about it. Just think about it. Maybe keep track of it for a week in your bullet journal. How much time are you spending on your photos, your measuring, and your comping, and can you cut that down any? Um, can you just do a search for brand, shirt, button front, and see what the sold went for instead of looking for the exact same design as yours? Um, now if you can't remember what a design is called, then clearly you want to find something that looks similar to yours because you had a brain fart and you couldn't remember Paisley or you didn't know Houndstooth or whatever. Um, but you really don't need to be a perfectionist and your, your descriptions. If you have big descriptions, get rid of them, make them small, make them small. Don't waste your time there. And in fact, if you're typing out Anything in your descriptions other than like copy pasting your title in there and adding in measurements for specific items and maybe small details like if you have electronic plush, you want to say it takes three AA batteries not included or included or whatever. Stuff that's specific to each individual item. If you're typing anything else in your description box, you need to make templates. Period. You need to make some templates. You can... And I have videos on this channel. You can absolutely search our channel for it. I have a ton of videos on how to make templates. Um, and you can make you can make one for everything you do. You can have a women's jeans template, a men's jeans, a plush, whatever. Then you're just going in, making a title, putting that in the description, and anything specific to that item that you need to put in there. But a lot of, I, I really feel just from, just from our group, not even all the reseller groups, just from ours. Um, and again, I mentioned tonight's going to have some tough love. So take this with, you know, I mean this well. You guys are wasting so much 
time on things that you don't need to be. Oh, Red Negerson's Resales. Nathan just sent us a super chat. Thank you so much. And he asked, is Star is sleeping a waste of time? It is. We need to sleep, but I feel like I feel like they should have invented something. It's 2019. Where's the pill we take so we don't have to sleep? But uh, thank you so much for the super chat. I 100% appreciate it. Um, oh, Georgie's girl is Vicky. Um, I spoke to her in a face chat. So she did get a bullet journal. Good, 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 good. Um, that's like the one, the one thing if I could tell, if I could tell you one way to stop wasting time is to start keeping track of your time. It's an eye opener to see where you're spending your time. Um, so maybe you guys, maybe this next week, you just make it a point to pay attention. How long are you taking to measure things? Are you taking measurements you don't need? Like, honestly, do you need to measure shirts? The sleeves on shirts that are short sleeve? Do you really need that? Probably not. <laughs> maybe just on long sleeves, on men's dress shirts or something. Um, how, how long are you taking to comp? Are you looking items up on Google you don't need to? Now, like I said, there's exceptions. If you've got antiques or vintage items or anything really unique that needs research, absolutely. Um, but if you're flying through a stack of your bread and butter jeans, you, you absolutely should just be flying through them. You should be using your templates, the measurements you've always used. And for the most part, if it's something you're used to, you should have your comps down, down pat. And that's something I'll talk about in the video about comping. Okay, so let's get into prioritizing. Y'all need to pri prioritize. I can't even talk tonight. Y'all need to prioritize your life. So there's three main things that are never a waste of time. And number one is your family. If you have small kids at home and you're filling those sippy cups and you're changing those diapers and you're getting snacks and you have to work around nap time, if you have a teenager who has a part-time job or he's, he or she is involved in sports or some kind of um, chess club or whatever, and you spend a lot of your time chauffeuring your kid to and from work or to activities, um, if your husband has a TV show that he likes for you to take a break and sit down and watch with him every week, once a week, things like that. Your mom likes to go to lunch with you once a week. Um, Anything that you're doing with your family is never a waste of time. I cannot express that enough to you guys because your family will not be there forever. Your kids will not be small forever. Um, so you really have to make it a point in your life to prioritize your family and make them, you know, your number one priority and make them feel important, make them feel loved and spend time with them. And that can include friends, too, because family isn't always blood. I mean, some of us do have very close friends that we do consider family. So take them into account when you count your family. The second person you can never, ever waste too much time on is yourself, with rare exceptions. Um, that's a balance you have to learn. You probably shouldn't be sitting on Xbox hours a day social media, all those things you're wasting time, but you also should not become a workaholic and always work. Um, you do need to take time for yourself. You shouldn't be wasting time, but you need to take time. And that's a balance you're gonna have to learn. If you need to keep track in your bullet journal of what you're doing every single day for the rest of your life to get a good grip on it, then you need to keep track of it every single day for the rest of your life until you get a good grip on it. Um, you know, laying in bed every night, if, you, if you're like me and you love to read, and I'm an avid reader, I love books, I love to read. Um, I read for half an hour to an hour until I fall asleep. I like basically read myself to sleep every night. Um, once a week, I either go to the movie theater with Keith and see a movie together, or if there's nothing in the theater that I want to see, I will once a week take an evening off, usually Saturday, you know, after dinner on, and watch maybe two movies back to back, like some kind of movie fest on Netflix or Hulu. And I do that once a week, and I read every night, and that keeps me sane. That's my me time that I need to have. Um... But if you're sitting down and reading a book every single day and you're watching movies every night, 
then you've probably you're probably spending way too much time on your leisure activities but you can't forget about yourself you guys need to take a beat every morning. Take a beat, have a cup of coffee, breathe in the morning air, appreciate the fact that you woke up this morning and that you're alive, and make your to-do list and plan your day. If you've got little ones at home or kids going off to school, take that beat in the morning to be with them and send them off to school. Send your spouse off to work, whatever you need to do. Um, and take breaks, you know, we are sedentary. So make sure you're taking breaks throughout the day, that you're stretching, drinking plenty of water. Don't get lost in the soda and the coffee world and forget to drink water. That's so, so, so important. Go for a walk. Just find that balance. Don't waste your time because you work from home and that's very easy to do. But don't get so lost in your work that you forget who you are and forget to do things for yourself once in a while. And the third thing that's never a waste of time is work. And again, that's finding that balance. Please don't spend an hour looking up one shirt. In an hour, you should have had 10 listed. You know what I'm saying? Um, or wherever you're at. Most people can do 10 an hour. Um, and I'm talking after photos and measurements are taken when you sit down to list and everything else is done. Most people can do 6 to 10 an hour. Um, so if you're wasting time that way, yes, you're wasting time. But making time for work every single day is not a waste of time. You've got to find that balance. Um, because even though you love your family and you need to, you know, pamper yourself once in a while, if that's all you do, you now are no longer a business owner. You're, you don't have a business. You're not doing anything. You're not making money. So if you've got to have a schedule, you've got to have a schedule. And, and everyone is different. So you've got to find where you thrive. You have to find your personal space of thriving. Some people are like me, and Casey the Rockstar Flipper is a lot like me too, where we like to work a little bit in the morning and then take time, you know, in the after, well, I guess morning into the afternoon. And then I take time to eat dinner with Keith, maybe watch a TV show with Keith, and then I get back to work after that and work for a little bit. Some people can do that. They can just kind of work in chunks throughout the day around their family and their other priorities. Um, but some people absolutely cannot work like that because what they'll do is put that little bit of work in the morning, take the afternoon off of the kids and the husband or the wife, and then after dinner, no momentum. Some people have that mentality that the evening time or the after dinner time is the resting and relaxing family time. And it's not a bad mentality to have if that's your mentality. Um, some people are just ingrained that way, so you can't work the way I do. You can't split your work day into two pieces with a big break in the middle because you'll never get back to work because your mentality is that evening time when I like to work, evening is the best time for me to do editing, um, things that require thinking because I'm a night owl. Um, but people with that other kind of mentality, they can't do it. They can't force themselves to get back to work. So in order for them to thrive at home, working from home for themselves, they are going to have to give themselves a schedule. Seven to three, eight to four, nine to five, 10 to six, whatever it is, find that perfect little window for yourself, work that chunk, take a break for lunch, you guys move around, stretch, drink water, eat, don't forget to do all that stuff to take care of yourself. And then you have the whole evening off with your family, just like you did when you worked outside of the house. If you still work outside of the house and you're trying to build a business, unfortunately for you, you are going to have to work a little bit harder um, because you've basically got two jobs. You've got a full-time job and a part-time job or two full-time jobs or whatever you've got going on. So you are going to have to find your balance and how you're going to work best. Um, so that's why I tell you guys it's so important to keep track in these bullet journals of, of when you're doing things and how long you're doing them for because you will discover things about yourself that maybe you didn't know or maybe you knew and weren't ready to realize like my whole if I don't want to do it I just sit there and waste time when you discover these things about yourself um you're more likely to want to fix them so when you're keeping track in the bullet journal if you find out you're most awake at six in the morning then that's when you should be working if you find out that you like midnight to two then that's when you should be working 
You just got to find, because everyone's different. Um, everyone has a different inner rhythm. Everybody's family is different. Everybody has different responsibilities and priorities in their life. And you've got to fit your business in around that. Or you're not really running a business. Hey, Flippin' Particles. Hey, welcome in. Thanks for joining us. Um, Grand Larceny is here. Hey, hey, hey. Uh, so yeah, time, quality time, it's never a waste. And it's, it's one thing you can never get back. Um, oh, Nathan had to put his mom in the hospital today. I hope she gets better. Um, <laughs> last weekend was our 30th anniversary and you went to Goodwill while on our trip, says Bamboo Spine. Hey, there's no, nothing wrong with that, especially if he enjoys it too. Um, I know there's a lot, there's a lot of reselling couples. I don't know if your husband's involved in your business, but... Like Keith and I, we we always find ourselves sourcing on date night or doing something, but we enjoy it. There's nothing wrong with doing things you enjoy together, even if it's sourcing. Um, Virginia got a sale on Poshmark today. Yay! You are so welcome. Um, Virginia's referring to every Sunday I do a posh sharing club. Um, sorry, an ambulance just went by and I'm like nosy. Um... I did used to do them on Saturdays, but I've moved them to Sundays because I found that a lot of people were telling me they were getting more sales on Sunday than Saturday. So we do a posh sharing party. Say that three times fast. A posh sharing party in the group every Sunday where everybody shares everybody else. Um, Catherine Hurt says, got invited to go... To connect for success at eBay in Los Angeles. Do you know what I might expect? No. Unfortunately, I've never been never been invited. I'm not important enough. No, I'm kidding. Um, I, I don't know. Um, Robin. I'm trying to think of her name. I met her last year at eBay Open. I know she's involved in those. Um, Catherine, if you are in the Facebook group, make a post, tag me, and I will hook you up with her. Um... Yeah, David and Bill work a 4 p.m. to midnight job, and then they also do eBay. And those two are absolutely, oh, they are go-getters. They're up early sourcing every, they're up before I am, and this is the only thing I do. <laughs> and they work till midnight, so they found their balance. They found how to make it work, so. Uh, I do have videos uh, in reference to listing fast, no one. I have specifically one, I believe, if you search the channel, it's called How to List Faster on eBay or List More Items Faster. And I have some on templates. Um, and, and it also is going to depend on a couple of other things. How long have you been doing this? Are you listing the same things over and over again? Most people who list the same things over and over again do get up to 10 an hour. If I sit down and I have the measurements and the photos in front of me, I can do 10 pairs of jeans, 10 to 15 in an hour. I'm not comping either. And then plush, I can do 10, 10-ish, depending on how much I'm comping. And there's uh, Robert. He is usually in here a zombie bargain hunter. He's in the Facebook group. Robert is our other plush royalty, as I call him. He can list like... 15 to 20 plus an hour because he doesn't comp and he, he does it over. That's like all he does. Um, so it, it comes with time. It comes with repetition. You will get faster. When you get to a point where you're not having to comp, when you know what you want for what you want, how to price things, um, and you'll become a specialist in something. Like I still list women's tops and jackets and shoes and things like that, but I'm really slow. So just to put that into perspective for you, I may be able to do 15 jeans an hour, but I can do six pairs of shoes. And I can do like eight tops because I have to comp each one and I don't know them as well. Even using templates, I'm a lot slower. So yeah, don't, if you're not that fast and it's because you're still learning or new or constantly doing different things and you haven't become an expert on one niche yet, you're fine. You're absolutely fine. But there are tips and tricks on how to list faster. So feel free to search the channel for those. Um, I had the worst FOMO yesterday. I had to work. Favorite thrift store was 75. Um, yeah, Vicky, I hear ya. FOMO is bad. But from what I understand from when we talked, you have a room full of inventory. So you should be listing. Because you have a death pile. 
smart and savvy gal is here. Okay, so we talked about prioritizing. We talked about where you're wasting your time. Um, as far as your business goes, y'all need to figure out how much money you need to make. That's the number one thing on how to prioritize your work day. Um, if you want, if you have replaced your full-time job and you need, you need to be making what you made at your full-time job and probably a little bit more for a cushion because you still want to source and stuff. Um, if you're working towards quitting your full-time job, if this is a part-time job, if you're just doing it to go on a Disney cruise, whatever your goal is, how much money do you need to make a month? Break that down by week. Um, figure out your average profit on your items and that'll tell you how many you need to sell per day to make that number a week. And let me see if I can throw out some real quick rough numbers to help you. I'm really bad at math. Really, 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 really bad at math. Um, okay, so let's say you need to make 400 a month. That'll be easy for me. That's 100 a week. If you have a $10 average profit on your items, then you need to sell 10 items a week. So one, one, one or more a day. And if you're doing mostly used clothing, it's that's around a 0.5% sell-through rate. So if you want to sell one item a day, you should probably have a thousand items up. That's wrong. I know we have like 1,900 and our 0.5 is 9, like 9 to 10. But yes, you can do the math. So then when you figure out how many you should be listing per day or selling per day to make that goal. Then you can figure out how much you need to be listing per day, which is usually double what you want to sell. If you want to sell two a day, you should be listing four a day. Why? Because you want to replace what you're selling and continue to grow at the same time. And you can figure out the overall number you need for your whole store to hit your sell-through rate. Electronics and things like that are going to have a 1% sell-through rate. They're going to be much higher. Use clothing, shoes, plush, ties, things like that. They're slower. So you want to have more, but it's, it's, it's all relative. You could be someone that needs 5,000 things in your store to make the money that you need to make. And somebody else could only need a thousand. Somebody else could have some really great hookup on blenders or phones or something and only need 200. So you have to figure it out for yourself. How much money you need to make? How many items do you need to sell to do that? So what should you be listing every day? Once you figure that out, if you know you need to list 10 things a day, then you need to have the time, you need to schedule this in your work day to measure, photograph, and list those 10 things a day to make it. Um, and then if you're going to be doing more than eBay, you gotta prioritize that time as well. If you want to be successful on Poshmark, you've got to be listing at least five things a day. Um, the general rule to stay active on Poshmark is five. It's a lot easier to list over there, especially if you're cross-posting from eBay, so five is not that big of a deal. It takes like five, ten minutes. You gotta be sharing your closet two to three times a day. You gotta be sharing other people. So you gotta make time for that. If you wanna cross-post to Macari, Amazon, if you want time to box up your items to ship them in for FBA, you gotta make time for it. If you want to start having affiliate links, then the first thing you need to do is build up a social media following because in order for you to make money with your affiliate links, you need followers that will click them and go there. So you need to spend time. And I'm not talking about the time that you waste on Facebook just looking at memes and, and farting around with your friends. Like legitimate time on Instagram, posting solid good posts with really great hashtags every day. Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, whatever you're using to build up your following, you need to be on there. You need to be interacting. You need to be using your hashtags. You need to be following others and building up that following for those affiliate links. If you want to do YouTube, you got to have time in your day. Um, how many videos are you going to make a week? Like how quickly do you want to be monetized? And I can do videos about like that in more depth if you guys want. Um, but if you want to make a video a day, and you're like me, I just do them in one take. Usually I don't do a lot of editing um, because I don't want to spend a lot of time. So if I sit down and I make a video, I talk for 20 minutes, I want to take five minutes to cut off the beginning and the end. Because um, the beginning of every video is like you're clicking on and you're like, hey guys. Um, and then you're like, I didn't like that. <laughs> um, and then the end, there's always like the part where you click off. But I can like do one in 20, 30 minutes. And that includes sitting down to talk, cutting off the beginning and the end, 
um, and uploading it and then promoting it on social media. A year ago, it took me an hour. I had to keep starting over. I had to do a lot more editing. I was not comfortable in front of the camera. Um, I had to start over a lot. I blah, 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 a lot. I like stumbled over my words. Um, I would get frustrated and I would say swears. <laughs> and instead of editing them out, I would just start over. It was a mess. So you got to figure out where you're at in YouTube. If you can just sit down in front of a camera and your tote's comfortable and you can just like blah, 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 put it out there, you're great. But if you need time to edit, you need time to edit. Um, Again, everyone's going to be different. Everyone's going to be at a different point in their journey, whether it's reselling, YouTube. Everything gets, I said this at the beginning, I feel like. I feel like I just said this at the beginning. But everything gets better with repetition. Everything. No matter what it is. If you do it over and over and over and over and over and over again, it is easier. You are more comfortable. Whether it's making videos, listing going for walks, running on the treadmill, training for a marathon, um, anything that you keep doing, you're going to get better at and it's going to get easier. Um, Virginia had an amazing clothing yard sale haul yesterday. Hudson, AG, jeans, free people. Wow, that is really cool. That is a great haul. Um, but 75 cents. That's why you have an entire room of inventory because you say things like, but 75 cents. The FOMO is real with you, girlfriend. Um, hi, Kim. It's okay to be late. If you want to go back and watch the beginning later, you can. Um, Greg is also late. That's cool. You guys, I appreciate you stopping in and hanging out with me. Whether you're coming at the beginning and leave early or coming late or stay the whole time, it's, I appreciate it either way. Um, Bailey's going to bed, so they're, they're prior to, Bailey is prioritizing sleep. Everyone's priorities are different. Sleep is not one of mine. Um, all right. I want to say two things to you and, the, and they're, they're tough love. And I'm going to say these two things. Then we're going to wrap up the show with talking about accountability. Okay. So the first thing I want to say to you is if you are still wasting time and you are not putting the work in, you are not a reseller. Sorry, but you're not. And if you shop more than your list, you're not a reseller, you're a shopper. You're a professional shopper and you're probably a hoarder. So if you want to have a business and you want it to work for you and you want to be a reseller, you guys have got to prioritize your time. You've got to prioritize your work. You've got to make time for your business amongst everything else and you've got to list every day and you've got to work every day and you've got to put that work in there or you're just a professional shopper or someone that likes to go to yard sales and uh, that's that's the tough love of the night if you want to say that you are a business owner or a reseller then you have to put in the work to back up your words all right, let's talk about accountability real quick. All right, so if you want to be accountable for anything in life, there's a trick to making yourself accountable. Tell a friend. Tell a family member. Go find a group and tell them. Tell your followers on your social media because that's what makes it real. And I learned this the hard way. I haven't had a cigarette in, I'm going on three years now. But I struggled with quitting smoking for years and years and years. And I would make all these deals with myself. I'll cut down. I'll get down to one every two hours, one every three hours. I'll smoke lights. I'll smoke ultralights. I'll quit next week. I'll quit tomorrow. I'll quit Monday. And I never did. Because I was only making deals with myself. And they were easy to break. But the minute I shared with somebody else that I wanted to quit smoking, it became real. And I had someone else who knew that I wanted to quit. I had somebody else who was aware of what I was trying to do. And if I didn't do it, not only was I secretly letting myself down, I was letting them down. And being a failure for most people is not acceptable. Most people, I don't know if embarrassed is the right word or just disappointed in yourself, but most people, when someone else knows you have failed at something, it's harder 
to deal with than if just you know. And having someone else feel pride in, in what you've done or encouraging you in what you've done is a lot bigger of a deal and a lot more important and happy feeling than just yourself. So I always tell people, if you want to be accountable for anything, tell somebody else. Make that person aware of what you're doing so that you're not letting them down when you fail. And ha and make sure it's someone that likes you. Like, don't go tell your worst enemy, I want to not eat junk food anymore because they're going to not encourage you to not eat junk food. But you know what I mean. Um, find a reselling group. Ours is really, our group is really great. Now, I'm actually going to get into a challenge we're doing in there in May that was not started by me, started by one of our members. But find a, a reselling group that you can do challenges with, share parties, challenge parties, listing parties, things that all of you will all together share your goals with so somebody else knows about it, you're held accountable, and you're all encouraging each other and praising each other and helping each other along and people that won't kick you when you're down. Because we're not always going to do everything perfectly. Everyone's going to fall off the wagon. Everyone's going to smoke a cigarette one more time. Everyone's going to eat a potato chip. Everyone's going to have a day where they don't list everything. And you need to be surrounded by people who will say, it's okay, get back up and try again. Um, so find yourself a group of people or a person or, you know, whatever, however many people that you want to share it with. But make sure there are people that are going to hold you accountable and be tough on you when they need to be, but will be supportive when they need to be as well. Um, and that goes with everything, not just your reselling goals, not just, you know, it's exercise, diet, smoke, if you want to quit smoking, if you want to quit drinking, if you want to quit swearing, if you want to, if you know you look horrible in jeans and you want to start wearing pants, I don't know, like anything in the world, um, telling someone else helps it really does but tell supportive people but tell people that are tough like you don't want to tell someone who's going to be a pushover and never like look at you and say you need to stop you need to stop making excuses and do it you know what I mean so um flipping particle says I do an accountability stream every weekday at noon to keep me accountable that's awesome um Holly's giving out Holly's my hall monitor <laughs> she's giving out late late written warnings um Vicky says, I almost quit a year ago. I didn't tell anyone, though. Um, yeah, don't tell your tell. Well, I'm not completely off nicotine, though, let's be honest. Um, I still vape. But the thing is, I feel like vaping's better, and I know that this is, like, a whole other conversation. But cigarettes have, like, arsenic and cat poisoning and tar and all that other stuff in it. At least this is just, like, three milligrams. Oh, yeah, I'm down to three milligrams. Um, but I had to have a crutch. It's not like I just, I had a crutch, but I did quit. I quit a lot. I even took a cessation class um, when I used to work in the healthcare field. They offered us one for free with Chantix. And I learned a lot in there. They say you have to quit like 10 times. You need a support group. They say it's, cigarettes are more addicting than heroin even. It's a hard, hard addiction to quit. So I have a crutch, but to me it's, it's better than the alternative, I guess. Um, and see, Kim, Kim, you're right. That's the other thing. If you smoke and you go outside to smoke, which you should be if you're a reseller, I just put that out there because as a former smoker, I can now smell it on other people and it's pretty stinky. Like, I'm like, geez, did I smell like that? I did. I used to smell like that. If you're a reseller and you smoke, you should be going outside to smoke and then you should be washing your hands before you touch your inventory. But, um... How much time are you wasting doing that? You know? Something to think about. And there's Hip Flippin' Mama. She says, hi, my favorite hippo. Hey, welcome in. I dropped in on her live show earlier today. Um, she was cutting her hair, I think, right? <laughs> but hey, welcome in. Um, so, let's see. Bamboo Spine Gal says, I love being in your Facebook group. I love to hear it. Thank you very much. But it's... It's the members. We have we have a really great group of members in there full of just amazing people that make the group what it is. Very, very positive attitudes in there. People are very helpful. Um, I'm, I'm like, I, I can't, I just, you guys are great. You guys are the best. Um, 
Cigarettes will make your babies be more naked. <laughs> I snorted. That's funny. Oh, boy. Um, <laughs> yeah, you guys, if you don't know Hip Flippin' Mama, her name's Kelly. She is amazing. I met her at Open last year. I knew her for about two seconds before I absolutely fell in love with her. <laughs> she is just hilarious. Very, very, very funny. Very, very nice person. I absolutely love her. Um, she calls me and checks on me like an actual mama, you guys. She's great. She does have a YouTube. If you want to put your YouTube in here, Kelly, you can. I'm actually going to have her as a guest on the channel soon. So um, you guys will get to see what I see in her. Um, all right. So the thing about accountability, we talked about that. I was going to put a spreadsheet into the group, our Facebook group. And I was going to start that at the beginning of May. And it'll be set up, not by me, by Keith. <laughs> um, but he's going to have it set up so it does all the math for us. And it's going to come out in June. Here's the thing. You'll put your name in. You'll put your goals. And then you can put each day. You'll be able to put, like, this week I want to list 70 things. And then Monday you do 10. Tuesday you do 5. So Wednesday you do 15. You would enter it each day and it would total it for you so you could see and everybody will see. It's going to be a Google Doc. It's going to be great because everyone's going to see what you said your goals were and everyone's going to see if you hit them or not. Um, and I was going to put it up at the beginning of May so it came right at the end of my challenge about keeping track of your time and stopping, stopping wasting. The challenge about stop wasting time. Y'all know what I'm trying to say. Um, but then... Steve, one of our members in the group, got a hold of me right before May started and said he wanted to hold a challenge in the group um, for the month of May because, incidentally, it's his birthday month. And, incidentally, his birthday is the same day as my youngest son's. Um, and it's also my birthday month, guys. Thursday is my birthday. And um, Saturday will be Steve and my son's. And... He said because it was his birthday month, he wanted to do something to challenge all the members of the group. So he made a post challenging everyone to list every single day. I think he, his challenge was like 10 on eBay and 5 on Posh or elsewhere. But if you can't do that many, um, you can put what you want to do. Anyway, it's I made his post an announcement so it stays at the top of the group. It has two hippos fighting like they're challenging each other. Um... And you can find it in the group. If you're not in the group, like I said, link is in the description. Please join the group. We have so much fun in there. Um, but yeah, so Steve approached me before it was even May. And he said, I want to do this challenge in honor of, our, of the birthday month. And I was like, yeah, go for it. So I'm actually going to let Steve's challenge run out all the way through May. Give him um, his chance to do that challenge with you guys. And then in June, unless someone else comes up with a different challenge... I'll let you run that through. I'll put it as an announcement as well. Um, we'll come out with our spreadsheet for everybody. But I kind of like the idea of members challenging each other more. Um, and just kind of interacting with each other than just me throwing a spreadsheet down and going, Here, this is what I hammered your head all the time about time management and accountability. Um, so, yes, we are doing a challenge for May for, for listing and accountability, whatever. List this many a day. It's in the group. It's at the top. It has two hippos. Um, I'm nicer than Kelly. <laughs> uh, yeah, thank you for those of you that are saying happy almost birthday. It will be Thursday. And I'm old, guys. I'm going to be 41. I feel old, but that's okay. Um, 41's the new 30, right? <laughs> um. You don't, you do have to be a mod to drop a link. That's not true, is it? Is that true? How come I can't? Well, you are now a mod, mama. You have a wrench, so drop a link to your YouTube channel. Um, thank you guys, everybody. So, we are pretty much at 10 o'clock. I talked the whole hour. I had a lot to say. <laughs> If you guys have any questions, real quick, go ahead and throw them in the chat. I will try to get to them as I'm doing the outro thing. Um, 
If not, you guys can always come back later, leave a comment on the video after it um, loads to the channel for the replay. I do answer. <laughs> Holly is older than me, so. Um, I do answer all my YouTube questions, each and every one. I do get behind. I will be 100% honest, you guys. I'm usually about a week worth of videos behind on my comments, but I do get to them. If you want me fast, join the Facebook group. I know I keep saying join the Facebook group, but if you want me fast, link is in the description. Tag me in a post. I usually get back to you within an hour or two. I check in the group once every one or two hours. Um... I don't spend a lot of time on Facebook. I don't waste time on Facebook like I tell you guys not to do. But no, I just check in the group. I check for tags. I make sure that everybody that has a question or needs my attention has it and gets their answer. It's the fastest way to get a hold of me. Um, <laughs> Kelly's the YouTube link is right there, you guys. Go over there. Follow her. No, you subscribe on YouTube. Subscribe to her. She does jewelry auctions. She's really, really funny. She's super awesome. You guys will not regret it. Um, <laughs> don't leave her a voicemail. Yeah, so Kelly calls me like once every couple of weeks to check in on me. And I'm never in a place where I can answer my phone. I'm at the movie theater. Or I'm working. And then I forget to check my voicemail for like two weeks. And then I have to tell her, I just got your message like a month later. And I'm so sorry. Um... Donatello stopped in for a nice hello. Hey, welcome in. Um, Kim's going to go list since I got me got her motivated. Um, yeah, I just heard my notification for Posh, so I'm going to go get a drink and sit down with a show on Netflix and share my Posh closet. But her, yes, her auctions are Wednesdays at 7 p.m. Eastern. Okay, so if you think of anything later in the comments, if you want me faster than that, join the Facebook group. Tag me. I will answer you as soon as possible. Um, don't leave me voicemails. I don't get back to those ever. Instagram, I'm really bad. Email, I'm bad. But you guys can get a hold of me any of those ways, and I will eventually get back to you. I'm just slower on some. Give this video a thumbs up before y'all leave. It does help the channel. And uh, thank you again for the super chat. That was Nathan, I believe. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you so much. And for everyone else in the chat, you guys, thank you so, so much for hanging out with me tonight, a little over an hour, listening to me talk about time management, prioritizing your time, and saying some really tough love things to you guys. Um, but I do appreciate you being here and hanging out with me. Uh, if you haven't already and you'd like to, please subscribe to our channel and help us feed Hungry Hippo. You can find us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. We're at Flippin' Hippos across all social media. And... You guys, go be productive. Go make your family a priority. Make yourself a priority. But most of all, make your business a priority. Go make money. Go be productive. I love you guys so, so much. See you next time. Bye.